Hi there, my name's Andy and I'm going to show you the easiest two chords to play on guitar and then show you how to play them in a chord sequence so that you know how to play along to any of the songs that are on my website already and this is an example of an absolute first lesson with me. You can use this video so that you know what guitar lesson is going to be like or to get a head start before your first lesson with me. So let's look at our first chord which is an E major and let's get you in for a close up. So here we are, I've moved the camera so that not only can you see my cool Union Jack rug, which looks amazing, um, you can also see the guitar from your point of view. This should be the angle that you're looking at your guitar at. A um, little bit on the anatomy. I'm going to number your strings, one through to six. So that's from the thinnest to the thickest. And I'm going to number your frets, one, two, and three. Um, Open strings are considered to be zero, zero fret, um, and I'm going to get you to put your first finger on the third string inside that first fret. So that's string one, two, three, and position wise you want it to stay on the tips of all your fingers, and you want to be at your side of the fret. So the fret, even though the fret is technically the metal strip that goes down, Fret 1 is this area here, the wooden part of your fretboard, and you want to be put your first finger at this side of this area, the side closest to you, kind of hutched up against the metal fret there. So that's where your first finger goes. Middle finger, second fret on the fifth string, and then your third finger directly underneath that middle finger. So that will be on the fourth string also second fret. So if we do those three again, we have one, two, and three. And if you push those down with the tips of your fingers, so you kind of make a nice arch shape with your hand, or kind of like a claw hand, I guess, for want of a, want of a better term. Um, press those down, strum every string with your right hand. And that's what your first chord should sound like. And both of these want to be, again, at your side of the fret here. If it's over this side, it might still ring out just about, but you will have to press down significantly harder to get this note to ring out. If you press over here, you'll most likely be very surprised at how much you don't have to press down and it still rings out and sounds great. If I play that same correct chord but I'm over this side it doesn't quite ring out when I'm pressing down the same amount so we're over this side and that's your first chord now here's that same chord from another angle um, here's our E chord that's what it should sound like and your first finger is on the first fret third string so one two three and this is also the first string that we'd um, call out our wound string so you've got two strings that are like cheese wire and then you should have three bronzy colored or silver colored strings with kind of metal wrapped around them and that's the first one that is wound uh, middle finger on the fifth string at the second fret and then your third finger directly underneath that uh, try and have your little finger Touched against your third finger, um, it just keeps it, makes sure we know what it's doing and it's not kind of down here or hurting your hand at all. You want to keep everything as close to this position as you can, really, to make it a nice, strong shape. Okay, your second chord is going to be an A, and we're going to learn this second chord from your first chord, which is an E major. So I want you to put that first chord, your fingers back where they were for this first chord. One, two, and three. And then I'm going to get to take your second and third fingers away. And just keep that first finger down. This first finger is going to be what I'm going to call your anchor finger. It's going to stay on this first string, and it's just going to slide across to your second fret. This is so that the change will be significantly easier, and you'll be able to remember your chords better. So for the first three chords which, that we're going to learn, that are E, A and D, this first finger is going to stay on 
this third string. It's just going to slide across like this. So this is where it was for an E. And your first finger stays on the same string, but it scooches over or slides over just inside this second fret. Now it's okay if it's at this side of the fret for this one, not over this side, because we need to put your middle finger directly above it and then your third finger directly below it. So I've missed out, I've not got my third finger here, kind of like where it was for the E, I moved it one further down and my first finger is holding the note down in the space. This is your A chord or A major or your second chord that we've done today and it should sound like that. So first finger's on the same string, middle finger's just above it and third finger just below it. Now on this, for this A chord, um, we're not going to strum this thickest E string. I just want you to strum it from the fifth string all the way down to the first. We'll get into hows and whys later, but just take it from me now that it just sounds better. In my opinion, we've got this low string that is kind of spoiling the chord a little bit, and we want it um, to be this thickest A string that's heard. Um, just a short bit reason why that sounds better and why that's what I want you to do. Um, this is your open A string, which is the root note or the bass note of this A chord of your A major, and that's why we have that one as your thickest one that we want heard. So um, we'll go back to the E chord, same method. Keep your first finger down, scooch it back to that first finger, first fret, and then strum your E chord. One more time to the A chord, first finger stays down, slide it over to that second fret, middle finger and third finger, middle finger above, third finger below, and strum, it sounds great. Second chord, first finger stays on the same fret, the other two come away, slide it just over that fret, middle finger above, third finger below, and strum from that A string, from the fifth string. Um, can be quite hard to get the middle one ringing out, so again, you've got to stay right on the tips of your finger to get that one ringing out. Everything inside this second fret here, so zero, one, two, and that's your A chord. First finger stays down, slide it back, strum your E chord. First finger stays down but scooches over to the second fret, middle finger above, third finger below, and strum. You may also see this chord uh, written down, or you may have learnt it, as kind of three in a row like this. This way of learning an A is absolutely fine if that's something you've done before, but if you struggle changing between an E and the A, or an A to a D, or if you struggle with any of the chord changes when you try and play this in a song, I recommend that you go for this A that I have taught with you today, um, because the idea of using this fingering is so that this first finger stays down, E, and A, and the next chord that you would do in the course, which is a D, and it, it just gives you that anchor point and saves you playing an E, taking all your fingers a day and then thinking, hang on, where do these go? I've lost my reference point. Right, so now you know your two chords, how do we play songs with them? Well, you need to know about bars and beats. There are four beats in a bar, and a beat is a pulse through any kind of music. So um, if you're tapping your foot to a song, or you've seen or you've clapped along to bands as they're playing, kind of in a chanting motion, you're clapping along to the beat or you're nodding your head to the beat. So if I play this pulse, that is the beat. And um, we play that beat to a count of four, for example, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. 
Notice I'm playing them all totally even uh, with an even space in between each of the strums. Um, if they play some slower and some quicker, it's impossible to tap your foot to it or nod your head to it because there's no rhythm. So you need to keep everything totally even. So get your guitar and just strum along to me now playing. So three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Keep that going. So a chord sequence is playing a certain chord for a certain amount of time and then playing another chord for a certain amount of time. For example, this is what a bar of E looks like and this is what one bar of E and then one bar of A looks like when written on a sheet of paper and this is what that should sound like. For example, you could just do one strum at the start of each bar, so on the first beat. One, two, three, then A, two, three, four. One, two, three, then A, two, three, four. That will be for the chord sequence above. And there's plenty of songs that happen like that. The song example I like to give my students to get them playing along to a record as soon as we can is uh, For What It's Worth by Buff Buffalo Springfield, which was Neil Young's first band. Um, so there's a bit of rock history for you. Um, so if we play this chord sequence along to me, you'll be able to do it along to the record as well. And it's one song under your belt that you can play along to a song with. So get ready with your first chord, that E major. Give it a strum. One, two, three, then. A, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. A, two, three, four. So that's just strumming one strum per bar, which when you've got a new chord sequence is very handy. Um, it just allows you to get all your chord changes and for you to know what's going to happen later on. Um, it does sound, rather than learning harder chords, it sounds much better, certainly earlier on, if we can get more strumming in there. So when you learn a new song, just play one strum per bar, but once you've got the chord changes under your fingers and you're a little bit more comfortable, default to playing on the beat. If you can play on that pulse that you would tap your feet to and clap your hands to if it was being played live by a band, um, you will be able to play along to the record, which is such an important skill to be able to do. Uh, many people who get up to such a high level on guitar still can't join into their favourite records or play along to the rock riffs that they know along to, uh, along to the record. So there's, there's a skill there and I want you to be able to do it straight away, even in this first lesson. So I'm going to count you in and I want you to this time, as long as the other one went okay, I want you to strum along to that beat. Ready? Two, three, four. E, two, three, then A, two, three, four. E, two, three, then A, two, three. Keep that going. E, and A. E, then A. Finish on E, three, four. E. Beautiful. If you can do that, then you can put that record on, or YouTube that song. Uh, Buffalo Springfield is the name of the band. For what it's worth is the name of the song, and it will sound great. Uh, if you so wish, we can have a little jam now. I'll sing a little bit of it for you, and uh, we, can, we can play together. Okay, so you ready? From your E chord, from that first chord that we did. One, two, three, four. E, two, three. One more time, E, and then just keep that going. There's something happening here. What it is ain't exactly clear. There's a man with a gun over there telling me I got to wear. I think it's time we stop, children. What's that sound? Everybody look. One more time and end on E. There you go, and stop there. Beautiful. I'm sure that sounded great. Um, if 
that wasn't at a level that you can get to if you couldn't join into me then go back and change between just E and A make sure your changes are absolutely solid and um, you can also just play along to the record just with an E chord just to kind of get used to playing along to the beat it's, some people it, it's more straightforward than others so if you play that first chord, that E chord you can stay on that first chord and just strum along to it try and count in your head every time you hear that change you're keeping one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four in your mind uh, you can count out loud if you want and you can even try not counting as well so try and try and just feel where four is or, or just count that, that one maybe so just go one But at the end of the day, the acid test is can you do this along to the record? Put the song on and strum along to it. Count yourself in and strum along. Just two, three, four, and start playing. If it sounds good along to the record, then you know you're doing it right. Um, so have fun with that and I'll hopefully see you for a later lesson.